right. Is it right for jail uh, to jail protesters for sitting on a motorway? We know who we're talking about here, don't we? The, the M25 insulate lot. National Highways has been granted an injunction against them. So here we see the trouble is that what really annoyed people was the police seem to be helping them at some stages. Activists from Insulate Britain, an offshoot of Extinction Rebellion, disrupted traffic for more than a week. On Tuesday, they ran towards oncoming traffic as well. The group say they won't stop until the government meets their demands and properly insulates homes in the UK. But ministers have criticised them, calling the behaviour reckless and bloody dangerous. So how does the injunction work? Well, specifically, it applies to the M25. No one's allowed to block, endanger or slow down the traffic. No one can assist somebody doing it. If they do, they're held in contempt of court. And it's a serious charge. If found guilty, you can face a prison sentence of up to two years and an unlimited fine. Yes, fine. But it's only the M25. There's a bit of a loophole. You're a lawyer, Shola. Mm. If I was an activist, I'd say, OK, well, we'll just go to a different motorway. Well, that, that is true, but look, there they, are different things here. Two things I want to point out. First of all, I don't think imprisonment would necessarily work with these hardcore activists. And the reason is that they'll probably see it as a feather in their caps. I think that insulate Britain shoot themselves in the foot. I mean, I don't see many people who disagree with their cause, but when they claim to be non-violent, I say it is not non-violent to run into oncoming traffic. It is not non-violent to cause the kind of blockage that they've been doing. It's, it's not just caused inconvenience, but it's actually put people's lives at risk. So will the imprisonment work? I don't know. Even if you lock them up for a week to two years, they will go, this is for my cause. They will say, but if you charge them, if you charge them hefty fines that they have to mortgage their homes for, well, yes. or to, that kind of thing might have an immediate impact. But maybe that's but the, the way, other yeah, thing with the injunction is that it doesn't read as though the injunction, and I've not had a chance to read it through. I've seen some people's analysis, but it appears that the injunction itself is, is not clear and it's too broad and it might be difficult to enforce. So using words like unknown persons, when they could, when that could be tighter, and even saying things like, um, I, my understanding is that the injunction says, people who encourage. So does that mean that if you're not there and you encourage, I don't know, on social media or outside, you know, offline, that means you're part of this injunction? Mm. It's not very clear. Do, do, yeah, but do you think it'll work, Andrew? Uh, no, the, and the injunction, because the judges are hopeless in this country, frankly, uh, they're always on the wrong side, in my view. They think uh, to, to apply the injunction to all motorways would be disproportionate. It should apply to all motorways. These people are stupid, selfish and reckless. They're running into front of traffic. I don't care if they risk their own lives, but they're risking the lives of motorists, which isn't fair. They're diverting police to jobs that they shouldn't, they shouldn't have, happen to do. And here's the thing. On my LBC show a couple of days ago, a guy called in who was trapped on the M25 for six hours, Chris. Wow. His mum had a stroke in the car. He was trying to drive her to hospital. I heard about this. Trying to drive her to hospital. Six hours it took him to get there. The, the doctors told him if he'd made the journey in the 90 minutes the journey should have taken, his mum would have had minimal conditions. She's paralysed down her entire left side. That's on their conscience, and they don't have a conscience. What does it, uh, they say in Chile? say, oh, our heart's breaking for him. Our heart's breaking for What's that woman. Afraid? Really? That's a consolation, mm. isn't it? It's the, reckless and stupid, so we've got to lock them up. The one, the one because thing it I... stops them going back on the motor. Okay. But then you have to also think about the fact that the, um, the leader... Hasn't insulated his home. Hasn't been insulated mm. his home. I, I don't get that. Liam yes. Norton, the, the, I just wonder, they are getting a massive amount of publicity, even the, the, we're talking about them now, which is what they want. But could it's not the have, kind of publicity they Well, need. yeah, but could you have some sort of news blackout on them? Would that work? But the thing is, the people that they're impacting are people, are everyday people. Yeah, so sure. if you black it out, you're blacking out the pain and the inconvenience that they're causing people. And the, this is a problem for me. The people that you're causing pain to, in Salute Britain, are not the decision makers. By all means, if you want to stop government cars from moving and you want to block Boris Johnson from leaving number 10, go to the people that are actually benefiting from what you're compl complaining about and doing nothing about it, not to stop in the rest of our lives when we're just trying to move you know, one foot in front of the other and carry on, carry on with our lives. It brings you two almost agree on this. Storm, uh, any calls? So we're talking about whether we should be jailing these protesters and uh, Bob from Portsmouth, who's on the line now, says it'd be too expensive. Well, the cost of sending someone to jail is the same cost of sending them to Eton, apparently, Bob, so you may be right. Yeah, I think the easiest way, I mean, all you do is you jail them, as uh, um, uh, Andrew was saying, the judges don't always jail them right anyway. 
what you've got to do is fine and make an initial fine for blocking carriageway £1,000. Every offence after that, double it. In 10 days, they're half a million pound in debt. It's as simple as that. Or finish it. And I would do that with all protests of these uh, environmentalists. Yeah, I don't I mean, know, a thousand, they wouldn't put them off at all. You need to go 10,000 on the first offence and 30,000 oh, on no. the second. Oh, no. Yeah, thought. and then the courts immediately take it out of their salaries. They need to feel the pain yeah. immediately. Do they yeah. work? Because how, they, how can they be on the motor every day? Do they work? Fine. They're back every day. Yeah, I mean, but they must well, be they, getting money Do they have a job, somehow. you mean? Yeah. yeah. They must they be make... getting money Well, somehow. one of them yeah. seems to be a vicar, uh, I think. Bob, thank you. Storm. We're going to speak to Jill from Cornwall now, who says they need to be arrested. Well, some have been, Jill, but you, you think they've been released and they offend again? Well, yes, I do. I, I, I think they should. I, I, I do think that jail is necessary as some form of punishment. I think that they're funded by people who possibly have quite a lot of money, in which case fining them won't necessarily hurt. I, I, I think any any form of punishment has to be the answer, and and I'm afraid I, I feel that putting them in jail um, is is necessary. So what what about when I saw pictures while you were talking of the police, who seem to almost be trading with them? I mean, they're, they're they're talking to them, they're asking them how they are, whatever. The I'm losing. I'm, I'm losing. Um, I, I was um, in agreement with a lot of the things that they said, not to the point of taking to the streets. I, I can understand where they're coming from, but I'm losing my belief in them and what they're standing for because of the way that they are, are trying to put across their argument. And, and like the lady said on the panel, the, the, the people that can change things are the very people that are not affected by what they're doing. Understood. Can I advise... Yeah, sure. I mean, Jill, thank you, okay, but can I advise some caution here? Because remember the government that we're dealing with, this Tory government is trying to silence protesters. So my, my concern about the way that they want to use imprisonment is that they're using this as a test case for every other movement, for every... Because you have to you look at... You don't think they should be jailed? Uh, no? uh, it's not like they shouldn't be jailed. I think we need to think through... You need to look at the totality of the circumstances. Here, there's a clear case that lives are being put at risk and their lives and those of motorists but not the way that for instance at Sarah Everett's um, a protest where the police manhandled women or the Black Lives Matter movement I just think that this government will use this as a test case a precedent to do but, something against but, every but, other protest. Jill had a very good point about she's losing the, the, the face in the argument yeah. because a poll by YouGov last week showed 67 percent I think of people think the cause is being damaged by the way they're behaving on the motorways. And, and we, in terms of insulation, we've got quite high levels we of do. insulation. We I mean, do. So it just seems like an odd one to and the, choose. And the clown who runs Insulate Britain hasn't had his home insulated. But He's maybe he can't he afford also, to. He also, no, he lives in a housing association property where there are grants available. He hasn't bothered to do it because he's a stinking hypocrite. He also wouldn't tell me what car he drives. I think we can get, assume what that is. It's not an electric one, is it? <laughs> OK. Storm, who's next? We're going to speak to Simon now, who doesn't think jail is the right approach. Simon, why not? Oh, hi there. Hi, Jeremy. Um, thanks for inviting me. Sure. I'd just like to say that um, I think we should ask them to do community support, or rather tell them to do it, and do it immediately. There should be a fast-tracking approach to um, getting them, rather than go through the courts, and as they say, judges may... Um, you know, sort of take their time to, um, you know, and, and there's a backlog anyway in the court cases, I believe. So uh, they should just immediately be parceled off to a farm in Norfolk or whatever and do two or three w weeks' work. Well, they might see that as a let-off. I mean, going to work in a far on a farm, they, they might think, no, but, but, but happy Simon, days. But Simon is right, they could help with the Brexit shortages, see? All, <sighs> those, all those vegetables and all the things yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah. we've yeah. lost because we're of gonna, Brexit. We're going to start paying vegetable pickers proper salaries now post-Brexit. So, Simon, don't, you don't think jail will, will put them off doing it? Because they, they can't offend while they're in jail for a start. Jail costs us money as a country, and the court system costs us money. We know that they're actually on the road. We've filmed them. We know they're there. We know they've committed an offence. There's no need for all that sort of process. They could just be, I'm not saying bundled off. Of course, you've got to get them up from the road, having glued bundling themselves there. But A lot of us are in favour of bundling. Yeah, I don't, there I seems am. to be a problem with bundling people. But, uh -huh. you know, basically, what you get two, two officers who may or may not be burly. Let's not make this. And they, and yeah. they put their, their arm under the, under the armpit of the protester, each one. 
and they stand up and the guy just hasn't got a choice. I mean, what? Yeah, and, and quite. And, and the glue is, I take it, it's on, the, uh, on their clothing, not on their, um, not on their nether regions. Is there, sorry, is there glue involved in this? What? Yeah, they're gluing themselves to the motorway. And the glue they're gluing themselves to the road. It's incredibly bad for the environment, but these people don't care. Well, they're if, look, they're, glu well, they're gluing them, their clothes, but, you know, that's, that's their problem. So, Simon, thank you. I think we sorted it. I'm a bit worried about the glue scenario because actually, if you've ever used super glue, it, it gets everywhere. Nice. So if you're gluing it onto your trousers, that's going to seep right through onto your buttocks. Good. I'm a little... Good. No, I'm a little bit worried for well, them. That doesn't look, sound good. Not to be but advised. We are going into a bit of a, a Chinese discussion here, aren't we, of, of what would the Chinese do? You'd probably be happy with... I don't know whether... I mean, I'm I not... support the right to protest. And people say, oh, what about the suffragettes? The suffragettes did not put people's lives at risk. Mm. Other people's. They might have put but their own lives at risk. protest is always going to inconvenience someone. Yeah, but they, That's the whole point of it. They're yeah, putting people's it, lives at again, risk. When people are getting sick. People it, are missing their cancer appointments. Again, missing their dialysis I think you look at the totality of the circumstances. And in this case, what they claim to be non-violent is not non-violent. Mm. Yeah. So for me, I think something serious needs to be done. But I just don't think the imprisonment would work because they will see it as a feather in their cap. Yeah. They're hardcore okay. activists. Want to be yes. Any other comments? Somebody who's supporting these protesters oh. is George from Sheffield. Go on, George. Get, put their side if you can. Oh, good morning, Jeremy. Hi. I support anarchy, actually. <laughs> you know, in my, in my early teens, when I was 17, lots of young people, I'm, I'm 70 now, joined the Young Communist League, and I joined the Young Quakers as well, you know, and uh, we used to go protest marches against the bomb and stuff like that. But that you know, wasn't anarchy. You all turned up at the uh, same you know, time. Some of us have resorted in that, like, like Roman Square, but to, you know, like the CND. But, but what, what I want them to do, I want them to form a political extension rebellion party and stand on local council and for parliament because we've got to get rid of this dead wood. We've got to get rid of this war mentality. You know, what are we teaching our kids? In every, it seems to be every other year we seem to be getting into wars after war. Yeah. What is the matter with us? But well, do, are we this so is really, George, this is really about whether they should be punished for demonstrating in that <laughs> way. Well, to be honest, they, um, they, um, they, shouldn't, um, they shouldn't go to prison for it because they'll get police records and they're going to have problems getting jobs. They should be made to do community work if we go to do this to them. But let's face it, we do need a movement, a political party. An well, Extinction Rebellion is a type of party. Well, I would agree. Judge, well, that's the point. We're, we're, oh, that's the point. Sorry to interrupt, Judge. But that's, the, that, that's the point of the imprisonment. It's meant to be a deterrent. It's meant for them to think, oh, my God, if I go to prison, I won't be able to get a job because I get convicted. It's meant, mm. to, it's meant for any reasonable person yeah. to go, OK, is this the way I should be doing what I'm doing? George, are you still an anarchist? Yes, I, I, I've been in prison. And, you know, you go, you, you know, I mean, what do you do if you believe in something strongly? You go on hunger strike. It's complete common sense. And when they come out of prison, they'll have a nasty stigma trying to get work. And when, when I came out of prison, I tried to get a job in a supermarket. I mean, all I did, you know, uh, I broke into this club in Manchester. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, I got like six months. And then the other day, I was straight with them to the supermarket. And all I was going to do was stack shelves. And um, they turned me down in the supermarket. Yeah, and well, I that's what for that, twelve months after. That happens. They yeah, shouldn't so, sorry you be using that. your experience, George, to advise insulate Britain on what the negative impact would be right. from their actions. I would think that given your experience and your, your wisdom with your age, that you would think that actually boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, there should be a, a different way we can do this, okay. not put other people's lives at risk. Let's, let's move on. We've got stories of the day coming, including the Equalities Minister who says she doesn't care about colonialism. After the break, is it selfish to become a mother in your 60s? 0207. 862 2222 is the number. See you very soon. <laughs>